Today we're going to talk about images of connective tissue proper. We will talk about the different cells of the connective tissue, identify the cells in various tissues, and the various characteristics of connective tissue. We will walk through each of the images that we have in their class. Thank you. Images of connective tissue. Uh, hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University at College Station. Here we can see the connective tissue that we're seeing. The mesenchymal cells, connective tissue, are a source of precursor cells. And so you see these fibroblast-like cells that are in there, uh, precursor cells. Here we see fat cells. There's a nucleus of it. So this is one fat cell and another fat cell. Uh, and here we see other connective tissue. These are like uh, neutrophils, uh, eosinophils, the lymphocytes that are there, a high concentration of, of nucleated cells. And then there's reticular connective tissue, reticular fibers. So that's the brown that we're seeing in through there that forms a network. Reticular fibers are branched, and they branch, and that allows cells to percolate through, like in the lymph node or spleen example. Uh, dense uh, uh, regular connective tissue, like in a tendon, where you see uh, lots of fibers in through there. And then we have elastic tissue, like in elastic artery. You can see the elastin that's in there. And then the mucous connective tissues uh, are different than the other connective tissue, and you find that uh, in the umbilical cord. So uh, if we start with uh, loose connective tissue, loose connective tissue means lots of cells and less fibers in contrast to dense regular connective tissue like a tendon. Few cells, there's a cytoplasm, here's this nucleus, and then many fibers, that, that we say. Connective tissue, the important thing uh, is the extracellular component, and that is the fibers that were laid down, or uh, the cells and the secretions of the cells uh, that we see there, collagen or other secretions uh, of, the, of the cells. So if we look at the uh, lamina propria uh, in through there, the lamina propria uh, is a portion that uh, supports the epithelium on the surface. So we see the simple columnar epithelium here with goblet cells and the lamina propria, epithelium, lamina propria, and muscular mucosa we see here makes the mucosa and that makes this uh, the submucosa. So if we look at that, we see some eosinophils in there, a lobulated uh, nucleus with uh, big red granules, and you see fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are cigar-like cells uh, that we see there. Here's the nucleus from there to there, and the other components we see the cytoplasm. And there's collagen. So here we see big collagen bundles that are in through, which is extracellular uh, matrix. Uh, also, we see lymphocytes. These little small guys here. Mostly, the all you see is a nucleus spherical nucleus uh, are lymphocytes. Plasma cells have uh, a lot of cytoplasm associated with them, and we'll see that later on when it's made of. Usually a, a spherical nucleus, maybe a, a clock shape or cartwheel spokes on a cartwheel is what the uh, collagen, the uh, chromatin looks like uh, in the nucleus. And then mast cells. So instead of having a libellated nucleus like this is in the field, it has a big nucleus in through there because it degranulates and then and then makes more granules as opposed to uh, eosinophil. Uh, it just uh, degranulates and, and is done with this activity. So if we uh, take a look at uh, at 61, we can see the muscularis externa uh, in through there. It's the muscularis externa, and this is the mucosa. The mucosa is composed of of uh, the muscular mucosa, and then also is composed uh, of the lamina propria and the epithelium on the surface. So if we look in here, we can see some. Uh, these are mast cells that uh, that we see uh, right in through there that has a non-libellated nucleus. Uh, you can see more of those uh, cells uh, in through there. We can see lymphocytes. We see fibroblasts in through there. We can see the various cells uh, that are there. These are epithelial cells. These granules here are certain cells uh, in the epithelial epithelium line. So there's a, a mast cell for sure. 
uh, in through there, another one there and there, which has a big nucleus, a non lobulated uh, nucleus. So we're looking around uh, in the connective tissue uh, to look for a nice fibroblast like cells, cigar shaped cells, um, and then a host of lymphocytes. So we have a high density of cells, few fibers, and makes a loose uh, connective tissue. And so the next one is the trachea. Uh, and we can see some eosinophils that are there. Uh, we see fibroblasts with a, a little bit of, of cytoplasm on either side. There's a, cyto there's a nucleus itself and there's a nucleolus. And then we see collagen bundles. Collagen bundles in through here and here, which is the extracellular matrix uh, produced by these fibroblasts. Now, I don't have a 40 slide, but we do have uh, another one which is similar to 39. Uh, and here we can see this is the connective tissue that's looking at. The surface cell is a respiratory epithelium, which is a pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is ciliated and has goblet cells. We see goblet cells there. We see endothelial cells around this little venule that we see. We see other, other endothelial cells here and here. These are lymphocytes. These guys here are lymphocytes. The little dots that we see in through there and we can see if maybe I don't see any I can recognize as plasma cells but I'm sure they are in there I'm going to take a look on the other side uh, and just looking for different cells that we can distinguish I can't distinguish these these are a high density of lymphocytes lymphoidal tissue that's in there for sure uh, but I really can't identify the different uh, different cells another accumulation of lymphocytes uh, lymphoidal tissue these are endothelial cells here associated with little capillaries um, uh, but uh, and here we can see uh, nuclei of fibroblasts in through there uh, and you can see a little bit of a cytoplasm of the fibroblasts and then the the, the green stuff there uh, is connective tissue. There's cartilage coming down through there. So these are some of the things. And then in slide uh, 33, uh, this is EM33, we see a plasma cell. So here's a plasma cell here. See the cartwheel shaped nucleus with the uh, uh, heterochromatin and euchromatin and the nucleolus in the center, which makes the kind of cartwheel shape. Uh, it has abundance of cytoplasm you see here on this cell and that cell and in there uh, is a uh, rough and the plasma reticulum and uh, uh, those uh, rough and plasma reticulum produces the protein of the antibody here we see one uh, in HD preparation there with the big plasma cell and usually have a Golgi apparatus close by that's the clear thing that we uh, that we see there so uh, those are plasma cells. We look at uh, at at EM35. We see eosinophil. This eosinophil uh, seen in the, with the lobulated nucleus and red granules. And if you look at those granules, you see that they're big granules in relation to mitochondria that we see in the eosinophil. Uh, also, you uh, note that they have a crystalline core. So, have crystalline core. And then uh, here's a fibroblast. So, there's a fibroblast here. You see it has some various organelles, rough VR, that we see there. But what it produces is extracellular matrix, the, the collagen bundles. And here we can see cross sections of individual collagen bundles and this a longitudinal section uh, of the collagen bundles. So uh, one, another one that we will see is the uh, lymphoidal tissue that we uh, have, lymphoidal tissue. And here we can see that they have macrophages. It's a nice macrophage here. This one has uh, is uh, I think spleen, which um, uh, the animal was fed, uh, injected with carbon, and carbon accumulated in the macrophages. So you can see that macrophages are all around in the spleen, and there are the ones that were responsible for help cleaning the, the blood up in the spleen. Here you see a macrophage at the electron microscopic level, um, big nucleus and uh, various states of degradation of the components that it has phagocytized. So very characteristic of macrophages have different sizes 
of various things that are in various states of degradation that is dark versus uh, light. Uh, other cells here, we see a plasma cell in through here. They can see a little bit of the nucleus, but a lot of rough in the plasma reticulum. Test absorptive cells, here's a lymphocyte. The lymphocyte has got a spherical nucleus and a little bit of cytoplasm that we see. There's an endothelial cell aligning this little capillary and another lymphocyte right here. So if we look at the small intestines, we can see more macrophages. Here's the nucleus, and then these are various degraded products uh, of the phagocytic activity uh, of the macrophage. There's a macrophage right there, right there. Uh, there's one here, 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 uh, here, uh, and even this one are macrophages. There's a, a little lymphatic in through there, a capillary. You can see the endothelial cell with the nucleus uh, right in, right in through there. So if we uh, look at the next one, we see a lymphoidal tissue. Uh, here we can see the capsule uh, of this, uh, looks like a lymph node. And here is a, this is a subcapillary sinus that we see here in the lymph node. And here we see a capsule. So on this outside, we have our capsules. And then we have these germinal centers that are in there. But we have a subcapillary space where fluid comes in through here, through the afferent lymph lymphatics, and then percolate down uh, into uh, the medulla and go into these sinuses. These are, vena these are lymphatic sinuses. Uh, there's also venous sinuses as well, but lymphatic sinuses here, and ultimately the fluid will go out. But what we're supposed to see uh, is a high density of connective tissue cells uh, here that we see uh, the, the lymphocytes, some fibroblasts in through there, uh, also connective tissue uh, that we see here. This is a, a fibroblast and through there and there, and this is collagen bundles that we see. You see them on the outside here, and more lymphocytes uh, in through there. Uh, so we're looking at the connective tissue around uh, the lymph node. For uh, Here's a blood vessel. These are endothelial cells in through there, little capillary. These are smooth muscle cells, the pink ones uh, on the outside here. There's a a little vein in through there, in two places. <laughs> you can see the, the valve of the vein, uh, and you can see the endothelial cells, and then the connective tissue uh, core of the little uh, valve uh, itself. So if we uh, then look at uh, 42, which is uh, lung tissue, uh, and this is intestine over here, uh, is what this is, but we see the mast cell. And the mast cell, as I mentioned, has a, a, a euchromatic or light staining nucleus and a fairly large nucleus. It's not lobulated uh, like a, a, an eosinophil is. And here, the special stain to be able to see uh, the granule, granules, and you have histamine and heparin uh, in these things and associated with, uh, with itching and all. So if we take a look at um, uh, at that, uh, we can see um, see that little piece of lung, and we can see that there's a lung tissue right here. You can see there's this is the uh, type uh, type one pneumocyte that's in lung. But for us to look at, this is uh, part of the uh, airway. This is like a bronchiole. Uh, here we see a mast cell and the connective tissue. Uh, very nice granules that we see there, and blue granules, and a euchromatic nucleus. These are endothelial cells. There's a nucleus of one and another nucleus of another one that we see there. More mast cells that we're seeing there. Uh, there's another connective tissue cell, a fat cell. Fat cells look like chicken wire, basically, and the fat uh, has been. Uh, usually uh, remove from it, but and then we just see this structure in through there, and there's a nuclei of the cells as opposed to this collagen bundles. So a high density of cells is loose connective tissue. A high density of fibers is dense connective tissue. But this is not muscle hair. Uh, this is actually muscle hair. It's not uh, connective tissue. If we uh, anywhere you have these. There's a blood vessel right there. 
uh, vein, and there we can see the connective tissue that supports that vein. So uh, the next slide is uh, 23 skin. We looked at it before with the epidermis and the dermis, and here we should see that these are the reedy pegs, the projection of the epidermis down into the dermis, and the projection of the dermis into the epidermis is a dermal papillae. And these uh, interface increase the surface area between the epidermis and the dermis. But what we're supposed to look at is a connective tissue in the dermis, and we see the fibroblasts, and we see uh, the flat, the, the fat cells. So if we take a look at that, here we can see it. So there's epidermis and the dermis, and we can see uh, the big bundles of of collagen fibers in through there and the occasional cell. So this is dense, and since the fibers are arranged ir irregularly, this is dense, irregular connective tissue. Uh, you can see some fibers across section, some a longitudinal section, but these are uh, bundles of uh, collagen fibers that we see. There's a blood vessel going through there. You can see the endothelial cells here and the smooth muscle cells uh, on the outside. And remember, we looked at this before. This is nerve. Nerve has connective tissue on the outside, so this is fibroblasts of the perineurium uh, that we see there in collagen bundles uh, around them. This is nerve, nerve, nerve. Uh, this is sweat duct uh, that we've seen before. Uh, sweat. This is a, a little artery in through there, more sweat uh, ducts of various eosinophilic as opposed to the secretory portion. I uh, remember are more uh, larger. Uh, and remember, this has stratified cuboidal epithelium is in the duct, 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 secretory portion. Uh, the pink we see around there are the myoepithelium uh, that we see. More nerve, and the surrounding the nerve would be the perineurium that we see. There is also endoneurium in there, and an epineurium on the outside of a big nerve, but we don't see the epineurium at this point. More blood vessels, endothelial cells. And we see some, these are neutrophils that are in, inside there, and red blood cells as well. Lymphocyte that we see uh, in, the, uh, in the blood itself. So that's what we saw with uh, the skin. Uh, <clears throat> if we look at the extracellular matrix that we're speaking of, this is a fibroblast that we see there with the, uh, a euchromatic nucleus. And this one's actually producing uh, collagen uh, as it has a lots of rough and plastic reticulum uh, associated with that. And here you see the collagen bundles uh, which have been produced by these uh, fibroblast cells. So here, here you see like a cluster of bundles. That's what we see here, cluster of bundles. And then these are the fibroblasts uh, that, uh, that creates them. If we look at the spleen, <clears throat> we have a capsule that comes around. We can see the capsule, dense, irregular connective tissue is what's in the capsule. And then you have lymphoidal modules, uh, lymphoidal tissue uh, that is inside there. So let's just take a look uh, at the spleen. And here we can see, uh, we can see the, the capsule on the outside, which is dense, irregular connective tissue. And... Uh, a lot of times there's a little epithelium on the very top, mesothelium. But here we see the, the capsule and then lymphoidal tissue. This is some smooth muscle inside there. Uh, you can see uh, red blood cells as well as neutrophils uh, in through here. Don't worry about organization of the spleen right now. But we're supposed to look at the, the capsule and then the, the outside. You can see the capsule and the capsule projects uh, inside and uh, uh, any have time you have blood vessels and all you have to have connective tissue uh, supporting it. The next one is a tendon. Tendon is a regular, dense, regular connective tissue because uh, the, uh, the tissue runs in one direction. And so here we see the fibroblasts and we see the collagen bundles are all lined up in one direction. That makes it regular as opposed to irregular in the dermis where the collagen bundles uh, go in different directions. So collagen and these are the nuclei of the fibroblasts that we see there and that's what we see here. These dark king are the nuclei 
of a fibroblast. Um, and so uh, if we take a look at that, this is one of these, this is slide 15, and we can see that the collagen bundles run all in one direction. And so there's a lots of pink between the, nu uh, between the blue. In other words, these are the nuclei of the cells, and then these are the extracellular matrix. It's hard to make out where the individual cell uh, is itself, but uh, you can see the nucleus of the cell and see the extracellular matrix, which is arranged in a, a linear, linear fashion. Hence, regular, dense. Dense because a lot of fibers and few, uh, and few uh, cells that we have there. So the next one is the reticular fibers. Reticular fibers, as I mentioned, are branched, uh, and so they run throughout. Uh, you can see reticular fibers in through there, and actually, actually you can see reticular fibers inside uh, there as well, and that provides support so the lymphocytes can just percolate through. So the lymph node, the capsule, will be out here, and you have uh, reticular fibers throughout uh, there, uh, which uh, will support it. So if we take a look at the lymph node, uh, we can see that in throughout uh, it, you will see these black lines, which are the reticular fibers. That are These are lymphocytes in through there. And so you can see that you don't have reticular fibers in the blood vessels, of course, but you do have it in the supporting tissue and even in the capsule uh, of the lymph node. So that's what we're seeing there. We also have reticular fibers in the blood vessels as well, too, as part of the support things that, that you can um, that you can see. Uh, the next one that we see uh, is the aorta uh, in a special stain to look at the elastic fibers that are in there. In between the elastic fibers are smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells are what's in blood vessels uh, as a rule. So, since it's somewhat contracted, uh, you will see the squiggly lines, but they could stretch out uh, if it were uh, stretched. And so here we can see one of those. Uh, we can see uh, the elastic. So, where the others were showing reticular fibers, this is showing elastin. Um, and at near the lumen, there's a lot of elastic tissue. And this elastic tissue is very important in the aorta to recall after the contraction uh, has occurred. So they expand whenever the heart contracts and then they recall and that helps maintain the pressure during uh, the relaxation of the heart. Endothelial cells be lining the lumen right in through there and the subendothelial connective tissue. So these are fibroblasts and a little bit of collagen here to kind of cushion that as well. So uh, the next thing that we see is what we saw before, uh, the kidney. Uh, and we looked at the basement membrane and we looked at the glycocadix in the brush in the, in the brush border of the proximal tubule. Uh, today we're supposed to look at the extracellular matrix and stuff in between, uh, outside the cells. You will have fibroblasts supporting all of the in between there. Uh, we have collagen bundles supporting uh, in between there. And so if we take a look at that again, uh, we can see that there's connective tissue around blood vessels. This is uh, uh, blood vessels that we see in through there. See the endothelial cells uh, uh, lining it. There's uh, endothelial cells here. And then we can see uh, smooth muscle cells, a cigar shape, smooth muscle cells. And here we see the collagen bundles of the connective tissue in the extracellular matrix. So there's, a, there's actually blood uh, in that hole. Uh, but uh, surrounding the blood vessels that you see throughout there, there's blood vessels everywhere because you got the paratubular capillaries uh, and the vasorecte right here on down deeper there's vasorecte. But anyhow, you have connective tissue around that uh, supports uh, all of these uh, all of these structures. Uh, another type of connective tissue is the is in the umbilical cord, the mucus type. A connective tissue, real fine fibers, but you see the uh, fibroblasts that are there and real, real fine, fine fibers to support the umbilical cord. And in the umbilical cord, we have two arteries and a vein. And that's what we're going to see in the next slide. 
you see the umbilical cord and here we can see the umbilical cord actually it doesn't look that different these are the two arteries in the vein uh, that we see there they look very similar but uh, here you see this move muscle cells in there the endothelial cells in through there but in here is where you have the mucus connected tissue really fine fiber so it's not coarse uh, fibers like you see in collagen but here we see the fibroblasts uh, associated with them and then there's epithelial layer on the outside lining the outside so it could slip and slide uh, so to speak the last thing uh, for the clinical correlation has to do with mast cells and connective tissue and their release of histamine and heparin. So what we're seeing in the mast cells, and here we see the mast cell in the slide 42, where a, a big nucleus, euchromatic, and a lots of granules here with a similar type of thing. And you can see the granules here do not have a crystal core uh, like they do have. Uh, and we can see that here. Again, we've seen this before. This is the long... Uh, and so in the lung, we see the air spaces, we see blood vessels of the capillaries, you see the red blood cells in the capillaries themselves, but in the connective tissue uh, is where we can see, and you can see the granules of the, of the mast cell, lots of mast cell granules that we can see there. It's cut through. Actually, this is a, skeleton, this is a cardiac muscle that's in, uh, in an a artery. Uh, sometimes uh, in the pulmonary uh, arteries, uh, you have a cardiac muscle that extends that. You can see the, the striations in it and also the intercalated disc. Intercalated disc where cells are joined together. No doubt this is cardiac muscle. And then uh, here you see endothelial cells and blood vessels that are there. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll uh, end the images of connective tissue. Again, if this is useful, please uh, consider subscribing to the YouTube site and also tell your friends. Thank you.